You know, one thing about Mr. Hardeep Singh Puri is that he's always on time. And I'm sorry to keep you waiting, Mr. Puri, for the last five to seven minutes. So I saw this morning when the cabinet meeting happened, one of the first people, cabinet meeting starting at little after 10, 10, I saw him enter before 10 o'clock. And I think that was the alarm for everyone else to come in. So Mr. Puri, uh, thanks for coming in. Good to see you on Budget Day Live. And it's been a good day for you. I mean, one of your many ministries, Housing and Urban Affairs saw 40% rise in expenditure allocation. You must be very pleased. You must be extremely pleased. What, what's the reason behind this increase in allocation? Uh, well, first of all, uh, uh, Arnab, thank you for having me on your show. As usual, you are being kind, uh, saying nice things. Insofar as my ministry is concerned, I can tell you that we had <coughs> very ambitious targets right from the time of 2014. I mean, in the 10 years between 2004 and 14, we had a total expenditure on the urban rejuvenation during those 10 years of 1,57,000 crores. In the seven years of the Modi government, or rather the six years, because the programs really started in 2015, the expenditure had already gone up more than seven times. It was over 11,50,000 crores. In this budget, there are some very significant uh, uh, announcements. The one that you are referring to is that during the fiscal year 22-23, <coughs> we will have 80 lakh additional houses, but both in the Grameen sector and in the urban sector, to be uh, 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 made available to beneficiaries, out of which uh, the total amount uh, located is 48,000 crores, which I should point out for my urban ministries, 28,000 crores. So we are very happy with that. It will see the fulfillment of the Prime Minister's dream that by the year March 2022, every Indian, no matter where he or she lives, should have a pakka roof on his or her head. It should have a avas with a toilet, with a kitchen, with a gas cylinder, and all modern amenities. And the title of the home should be in the name of the lady of the house or co-jointly. Now we are almost completed that some residual stuff left. And I think the announcement made today but for the additional uh, 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 construction during 22-23 will complete that. I'm also very happy that the finance minister, the honorable finance minister, has actually adopted a very forward-looking visionary approach. I mean, as you know, in 1947, when we became an independent country, 17% of Indians lived in urban spaces. 17% uh, of a population of 350 million. By 2030, when the UN completes its sustainable development goals, we expect 600 million people to live in urban spaces. That will go up to 800 million later. If India's population is 1.6 billion, I hope it's not that much, that will be 50%. Now you need to re-image your cities. You need to look at the intellectual coordinates. What kind of demographic shifts will take place? What are the new amenities you have to build, apart from the smart city? So a high part committee will be established. Then in the universities, where there is a focus on urban studies, uh, five of those will be declared centers of excellence, and you will have 250 crores made available. So that plus, I must confess, I am thrilled with the 35% increase target for capital expenditure. You know, the, both the ministries that I am privileged to deal with, housing and urban affairs and petroleum and natural gas, already have very ambitious targets on capital expenditure, and we're hoping to complete 100% for both ministries in the fiscal year. But to have a 35% increase, that is what growth is all about. That is growth anchored in development. That is no, the real no. development. So this sets the trend, I think, for the next decade. Uh, now, now, Mr. Puri, there's a lot of inflation, you know, why can't, why couldn't rather taxes for the salaried class be cut? The economy is doing so well. People of the country have contributed. They have sacrificed. And they have adjusted. And they've responded to every call. And the middle class has, the salaried class has. They're asking tonight, why would our taxes not cut? Why is it so status quo is there? We're not MPs. Our salaries don't increase by 55% like it happened in 2018 for members of parliament. So given the inflation index, why, aren't, why weren't there any tax reliefs for the salary class adjusted to, to, to cost for inflation? Uh, 
Arnab, let me just share with you that I'm very happy about the buoyancy in the tax collection. Uh, the very fact that in the month of uh, January, the GST collection has gone to a record of 1,41,000 crores. This is, for the last four months, an increase every month. So that is a very good sign. If you see where we came from, where we went. The last year was a very difficult year, the last two years. We had to provide three meals in a day to 80, excess of 80 crore of our brothers and sisters because of the pandemic. We had to make 172 crore vaccine doses available free to our citizens. Yes, taxes, it's the legitimate aspiration of a person of the middle class like myself, hoping that taxes will come down. But tax lives have already come down. And I'm sure if we don't have these other expenditures to uh, cater to in the coming time, that is an issue that this finance minister would like to address. But let me say another thing. There are benefits going to the middle class, to the economically weaker section, to a lower income group, in many other <coughs> ways. I can count those out. You know, when, when the government reduces uh, uh, excise on petrol by 5 rupees and on diesel by 10 rupees, again, it's the same middle class consumer we have in mind. When we add to public transport, to the metro system, it's the same middle but class consumer. Felt. Equally, we only provide food to people. It's not felt. It's it's a bit uh, you know obscure. You know, it's it's not obvious. How you define the common man? No, I, I'm saying that you know they want uh, they want they well, they want they, 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 they wanted that special gesture. They haven't got that special gesture. Uh, let me let me. Anna, my sense is that before the last budget was presented uh, one year ago, you had a situation where the government had to present five mini budgets in order to deal with the stimulus and all the other issues. I'm very confident that if we can retain the same levels of revenue growth and if our other, you know, we have added in many ways, urea subsidy has gone up, agricultural credit has gone up. It's a question of dealing with different segments. I'm sure that the con the a class you are referring to, you, you refer to an MP salary with due respect and all humility. I can tell you the lowest salary I've ever earned in my life, and I have a long career of about 45 years in public life, is as a, is a member of parliament. But I agree with you. There are expectations, and as we grow, but the middle class, you know, the DNS allowance which is paid to government servants, that is one thing. Maybe, maybe <coughs> in the times to come, the Honorable Finance Minister will address providing relief two on the tax front by reducing the slab. But we are already at a pretty reasonable level compared to other countries of okay. our size yeah. and level of development. Okay, one, one quick question before I let you go. Mr. Puri, the finance ministry has slashed the disinvestment target by 55%, even though Air India got cleared. Is this an admission that divestment will not bring in the required impetus to push the economy further? Simply put, is the slashing of the disinvestment target an admission of defeat, Mr. Puri? Not at all, Arnabji. It is a very positive message which is being sent. I had the privilege of serving as the civil aviation minister uh, in, uh, uh, from the time of uh, 2019, uh, June to July of 2021, in those two years, we did the work on the disinvestment of Air India, and I'm glad, subsequently, <coughs> I saw my friend uh, Amitabh Khan's picture flashing. Yeah. You can have a discussion with him. Yeah. The very fact that we got Air India done and disinvested, and the very fact another entity has been disinvested today, and I'm minister in another ministry where there is a major entity up, and there are other targets that the final, it is a realistic, doable. The numbers earlier were wishful thinking. They, they represented an aspiration. This one is a readily doable target, and I'm confident that the success for Air India and the other entity which has been yeah. disinvested today will be the harbinger of many good privatizations to come. Okay. Well, Mr. Puri, always a pleasure to speak to you, and thanks for being candid as always. That's Hardeep Singh Puri. Thank you very much, Arnabji. Thank you.